نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وصراجا منيرا والذي بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة ومحى الظلم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أيها الأخوة المؤمنون وحد الله فإن التوحيد رأس الطاعات واتقوا الله فإن التقوى ملاك الحسنة وعليكم بالسنة فإن السنة تهدي إلى الإطاعة ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وإياك والبدعة فإن البدعة تهدي إلى المعصية ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ضل وغبا وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحب المحسنين قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن الظالمين بعضهم أولياء بعض والله ولي المتقين هذا بصائر للناس وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لما جاء رجلا إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنا نأكل ولا نشبع قال لعلكم تأكلون متفرقين اجتمعوا على طعامكم واذكروا اسم الله يبارك لكم فيه وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلوا جميعا ولا تفرقوا فإن البركة مع الجماعة Respected brothers and sisters in Islam We started speaking about how to select our friends and we have gone through many different aspects of this selection and how it is extremely important for a believer to realize that he is created as social being and his duties and responsibilities include to choose for socializing the righteous people people who are connected with their overwhelming compassion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their compassion and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects them with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obviously if you isolate yourself and you do not have any friends then you are going to miss many opportunities when you will be able to practice the most important function of a believer that is Amr bil ma'aruf and nahi anil munkar if somebody said something that was contrary to the messages of God Almighty or the decency then you will be able to remind that person you will be able to invite people to the decency of the messages of Allah and prohibit them from any kind of indecencies. When you read through the Holy Quran, you find all three words were used in the Holy Quran for a friend. Sadiq, that is a friend, and you find 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used that word in two different places. One is in chapter 43, sorry, chapter 26, that is Surah al Furqan, verse number 101, and we have talked about it last week. That on the day of judgment, a person will feel very sorry because he will find nobody to help, nobody to intercede. And wala sadiq in Hamim, and no close friend. Because friends were always readily available to rescue their friends. The friendship with the wrong kind of people will only be limited to this world. When we started speaking about that, we read the verse number 67 of chapter number 43. See, Surah al zukhruf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the other word that is khalil in plural al akhilla you know those friends which you have taken here in this world they will be your foes they will be your enemies on the day of judgment so make sure you make friendship with those who have taqwa the second instance where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used the word sadiq is Surah Al-Nur, Surah number 24, verse number 61, where the etiquettes of eating are discussed. لَيْسَ عَلَى الْأَعْمَ حَرَجْ وَلَا عَلَى الْأَعْرَجِ حَرَجْ وَلَا عَلَى الْمَغِيْضِ حَرَجْ And it goes on. Until it comes There Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is reminding us That you can eat In your own houses You can eat in the houses of your parents And relatives And in the house of a sincere friend a friend that is allowed by the words of god almighty so when we speak about that we need to take into consideration that sadiq means a specific person it's not like in modern america and modern world in 21st centuries everything circle around one word fun f-u-n you want to have fun, a lot of fun with the people you want to spend your time. But what Islam says that your friendship should be on the basis of a principle. What is that principle? The principle is gaining the good pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with those socializing. And the principle is benefiting from, like we said, the saying of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, that your friend, if you are spending time, should remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Increase you in your sense of companionship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your friend should increase you in knowledge. And your friend should increase you in practicing the proper way, the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the way Sadiq was used. Then the word Khalil was used in number of verses, at least in four places. The first one is in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 254. Again speaking about those individuals who will be feeling very, very sorry on the Day of Judgment. Why? Because the Day of Judgment is described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on that day, لا بيع فيه ولا خلة 
wala siya pa. There will be no selling and buying on that day. You know, businesses you have to leave behind here because people have business partnership in here. They socialize with each other with that purpose of prepared business relationship and business partnership. Wala wala, and there will be no friendship. People socialize with each other because of the friendship, and wala shafaa, and people sometimes to help other people intercede for them. So there will be no intercession. You know why? If you are not smart. In selecting your friends, those with your friendship, continue to maintain the same principle of moving forward for the success of both worlds. Your friendship should not be limited to the benefits of this world only. If it extends to the life after death, that is the kind of friendship recommended by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And Allah says in Surah Al Nisa, verse one twenty-five, Surah number four: "What taqal Allahu Ibrahim Khalila." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala made Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Allah took Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam as a friend. Look at Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Salam and his millah, the way in which he lived, is a real idea. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to speak about that. The whole Quran is full of verses, the practices which Muslims have to perform in their day-to-day -day life, connected to the most fundamental, basic five pillars of Islam, are connected to Sayyidina Ibrahim alaihi salam, or one of the. Family member of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, especially when you go to perform the Hajj, when you perform Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, that effort which which reminds you that though Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has power over everything, but Allah will only help those who will help help themselves. Sa'i, ليس للإنسان إلا ما سعى سورة النجم. Verse, verse number 439, chapter number 53, for a human being is nothing but what he or she strive for. So here it reminds us who was that? That was Hagar, the wife of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you go through pebbles, you know, or Jamarat, those three dummy pillars that reminds the great sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam, they both, when they got together in fulfilling their responsibility, even on account of losing their own life, that is the kind of commitment which was given and father and son when the father says, Ya Munayya, inni ara fil manami anni azbahuk, fangur mada tara. The style of a father to speak, a youth and teenager son, wasn't the harsh one. It wasn't unkind. It wasn't forcing and saying that I'm going to kill you because God told me that. No, oh, my son. I saw in my vision. Then I am slaughtering you. Fazor, what do you think? What is your opinion? Mazatara, what is your opinion? Let me know. And look at the son. The prophet's son, who is going to be a prophet in future, who is trained by Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. He did not say, Father, okay, I will think about it and I will let you know. Right there and then. Immediately, the next word came out of the mouth of the son was Ya Abati. Oh my father, you do what you are instructed to do. What you do, you know, you are instructed to do, you go ahead and do it. Why? That's when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and me, 
we have already given our options to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is it's Islam. It is the surrender to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All we have to think about is how are we going to fulfill this responsibility? How are we going to fulfill this process of killing and slaughtering? Obviously, so son says, Sataji to me. Read verses 99 to 113 from Surah number 37, Surah to Safar. You see the full story. Sataji to me. You will find me. And it is not complete the sentence. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reported in the Holy Quran. This is the tremendous praise for Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam as a teenager when he says Satajiduni and then he stops there and he interjects Insha Allah min as sabirin. He did not say Satajiduni min as sabirin. You will find me among those who have patience. No. Insha Allah. Every action, every word, every movement a believer does has to be connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the tawfiq and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say insha Allah for whatever you are going to do in your future, you are receiving the approval of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are getting the strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are getting the tawfiq and guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happens? Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam for a father who waited 86 years to be father and when his son is teenager he is asked to kill him slaughter him for the sake of Allah and Allah described in his word glorious word in the hala lahu wal bala wal mubin was a tremendous trial for Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And what did Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam do? When we talk about the revelation, the strongest form of revelation is when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam come with the messages of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the weakest form of revelation is when you are inspired something in your vision. And that was the Satan's point when he tried to misguide both father and son. You saw something in vision? Aren't you crazy? Are you going to kill your son? And he started throwing the pebbles to come over those. So Allah says, Qad saddaqta ru'ya. Qad saddaqta ru'ya. You have realized the dream. That is the commitment. When you realize your dream, even in your dream as a prophet, it's a revelation. When you see and you realize, so Allah says, Salam ala Ibrahim. Salutation to Ibrahim. And up to the day of judgment. That commitment. That surrender on part of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhim as -salam, will have to be practiced by every single believing individual male or female whoever is going to perform the Hajj or the pilgrimage. So not only for three days more than any other ritual, more than any other thing, for three days you have to continue to throw pebbles on those three dummy pillars where in three, you know, situation, three different geographical part in on their way Satan physically appeared. And on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, you have to commemorate the same sacrifice. Allah said, no, I don't need the life of your son. That was wala, that was a test. And you have passed the test. And Jibreel alayhi salam, 
came with a lamb from the heaven. So it's not meaningless when we offer that sacrifice every year. And it reminds us of a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where Allah said, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلَ That is our role model when we go for our friendships. About Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you read in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, verse number 73, that when pagan of Arabia came up with many different ways in attracting Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to their ways. Obviously, he was told, you know, what is our manifest? What is our policy? What is the foundation of Islam? The foundation of Islam is when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the truth, when it comes to the message, no compromises. For ya ayyuhal kafirun, la a'budu ma ta'budun, wa la antum a'abiduna ma a'abud, wa la na'abidun ma a'abadtum, wa la antum a'abiduna ma a'abud, lakum deenukum wa liyadheen. When it comes to truth and the falsehood, obviously you have to stick to the truth. And what can be other than truth when it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not budge and continue to be firm in following the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did not make that kind of friendship that oh you worship uh, uh, our idols one day, we worship Allah one day, there is no compromise of that kind or in any basic foundations and principles of Islam there are going to be no compromise. And if you would have done that, Allah says to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِذًا لَتَّخَذُوكَ خَلِيلًا if you would have done that, they would have made you your friend, uh, their friend. Khalila, same word. Khalil is used, used. And I am, we recited the verse in the previous khutbah from Surah al furqan verse 28. Sorry, Surah Al-Shura, verse 28. What was that? The person who is on the Day of Judgment feeling sorry said, Ya Wailata, Laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila. I wish I did not have friendship with such and such person. So that was used. The third word which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used in the Holy Quran for friendship is, and we have referred to it from Surah number 10 verses 62 to 64 is the word wali. When you come to the word wali, it is in many, many chapters and verses of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used it and our time does not allow to go into all those details. But let me remind you that wali the word wali, it comes from wali, waliya, that is the root word, to be next to someone, to be near. When it is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like it is used in verse number 257, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, Allah waliyu alladheena aman. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Allah is the protector of the believers. He will bring them out from all kind of darknesses to the light of His message. Allah 
When is it? the word used with Allah, waliyul ladina amanu, also it means, inna Allah yudafi'u anil ladina amanu. Allah will defend those who are the believers. If it is used in plural form, and the address is coming to the believers, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tattakizu al-yahuda wa nasara awliya, in Surah Al-Nisa, if you go there, what is the meaning of that? The meaning is not frank. Again, the meaning is do not take anybody other than Allah. Do not take Jews or Christians as your protector. For a believer, the protector is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it can be used for the friendship when the meaning of protector is not there. And that is the misunderstanding of certain people when it comes to the Jews and Christians. And there are people who say, oh, Quran says don't have any friendship with the Jews and Christians. That is incorrect understanding. La yanhaqullahu anil ladheena lam yuqatilukum fi al-deeni wa lam yukhrijukum min diyarikum an tabarruhum wa tuqsitu ilayhim inna allaha yuhibbul muqsitin Surah number 60 verse number 8 The Muslims are required to treat rest of the humanity with the bear and test love and kindness and justice and fairness and Jews and Christians are given a specific title. Surah number 3, verse number 64. Ya ya kitab ila kalimatin bainana. How can you not make friendship with the Christian and Jews when Allah is saying it is one of your duty to go to the Jews and to the Christian and engage with them into an interfaith dialogue, into interreligious dialogue. And unless, why? Because we share. Sawaim bainana wa bainakum. What do we share? We share same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the misunderstanding on part of many people when they translate. Therefore one has to go to the real Arabic words in order to find out. So when you met somebody righteous friend, Qatada radiallahu anhu says in the tafsir of this word where you know you say wala sadiqin hamim I don't have any close friend he said ya'lamuna wallahi anna sadiqa idha kana salihan nafa wa anna alhamima idha kana salihan Shafa. So, if you have a righteous friend, he is going to be the one who will benefit you and who will intercede for you because certain individuals will be given the permission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment to intercede for others. But, those who are not smart, in choosing their friend, they are called Zalimeen. Wa inna Zalimeen, what we recited today. Surah al Jafiyah, Surah number 45, verses 19 and 20, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that surely wrongdoers are friends to each other, and Allah is the friend of those who ward off evil. That means the people of Taqwa. These are the insights, clear indications for the humankind and a guidance and mercy for a folk whose faith is sure. So brothers and sisters in Islam, our time is over. Therefore, and this topic we have, alhamdulillah, taken into consideration in many different aspects. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to fulfill our responsibility in practicing whatever we are learning. There is a request for dua for Mr. Patel and Sarah for having children. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them awladan salihan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them out of his tremendous mercy, righteous children to them and to everyone who would like to have righteous children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their dua. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimina fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الخلائق والبشر قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام وصل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والصحابة الجمعين والتابعين وتبع التابعين وسلف الصالحين وأولياء الكاملين وعلماء الراسخين لا يوم الدين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم الجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فاتبعونا أحسنا اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المؤمنين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون نذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ونذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقل الصلاة